Okay, now to create the function play with touch. So we'll jump off, jump out of the public function, and just above the start ball animation function, going to create the private function play with touch. It has an event variable of mouse event colon void okay now first thing we want to do is to remove the welcome screen of the stage so stage dot remove child welcome screen okay now we need to add an event listener to this stage for the touch event we need a touch begin and touch end. So stage dot add event listener a touch event dot touch underscore begin begin call the function start touch. And again, we'll need an event listener for the touch end. So we'll copy this, paste it, score end, and function will be called end touch. It's very essential that you name your functions as simple as you can so that afterwards, when you come back to it in like a month, month, two months, or maybe a year, you understand what the function start touch means and that is related to the touch underscore begin it's very easy and simple to understand it this way rather than to call this function like uh, I don't know function 1 and function 2 then God knows what function 3 is and this is just a simpler better easier way of uh, defining functions and organizing your code now that we've added these events we also need to animate the ball so ball anim timer dot start okay now to create these two functions private function start or first before that since you've used the touch events uh, then we need to set the multi-touch input mode and we set it in the constructor function here. So we say multi touch dot input mode equal to multi touch input mode dot touch underscore point okay now we can safely create the function start touch e colon touch event colon void now what we want this function to do first we want it to set our initial position once we put our finger on the stage and then when we slide left or right we want the player pad to move accordingly but we can't simply say set the player's x position equal to my fingers position let's say this is my finger here if i start touching here and sliding left and right then the moment i put my finger on the stage the pad will automatically be moved to this position and this is not what i want i want to be able to slide the pad left and right and uh, whatever I start the touch uh, wherever I end it that is I want to be able to put my finger here let's say and move it about two inches and if the pad is here it will not go to this position and move two inches it will remain in its initial position and simply move two inches a simple way of doing this is to set a number 
for offset an offset x number. What this number does is it re it reduces the current x position of my finger from the current x position of the pad. That is, it reduces this distance right here. It removes it so that whenever I put my finger on the stage, it's like I've just put it in the center of the uh, of the player pad. The way of doing that is simply by defining a new variable private variable call it offset x just type number and that's it go down here and we set offset x equal to my current my fingers current x position which is e dot stage x and that's a lowercase s e dot stage x minus the pads what what just happened e dot stage x minus the pads current x position player dot x and we also need to add an event listener to the stage that listens for my uh, finger movement so stage dot add event listener listener okay touch event dot touch underscore move and you guessed it start move semicolon to end your statement and so we're done with the start touch function to create the start move private function start move E colon touch event colon void now we set the pads position equal to the e dot stage x position minus the offset x position okay so player dot x will be equal to E dot stage x minus offset x and all we need to do now is to set some boundaries for the player we want, don't want him to go off the stage from this side or off the stage from this side just like we did with the ball pretty similar f player dot x is less than um, player dot width over two then player dot x will be equal to player dot width over two now else if Player dot y is greater than stage dot stage width minus layer dot width over two, then layer dot y be equal to this guy. Right here. Copy, paste, semicolon, and your statement, and that does it for the start move function. Now, all what's left is the end touch function. Okay, so again, private function 
and touch e colon touch event all what this function does basically is it removes the it cleans things up it removes the start move uh, event listener this is just to keep our code efficient so that if you're not actually if you don't have your finger on the stage then e you won't be consuming any memory so we'll copy this paste change this to remove and that's all of there is to it